you know, <clears throat> so getting back to it, man, you know, one of the, um, you know, we were, we were talking about helping people. You know, I, I try to go on Facebook every morning and uh, make an inspirational post or just drop something out there that could help somebody. You know, it's not a meme or anything like that. Not hating on the meme, folks. You know what I mean? They, they memes are good. I, it's I have a purpose. They make us laugh. I enjoy them. Well, I mean, there's some really positive memes out there, too. And, and um, you know, I ain't hating on the meme, folks. But... What I the content that I put out there, man, it's straight from my heart. It's something that I feel, and it's something that that I, I that came to me while I was working on me. You know what I mean? It's something that it's very mean, meaningful because I was I was putting in work when that came to me. You know what I mean? And and I felt like, hey, look, this is this is good. I feel like somebody needs to hear this because. I needed to hear it while I was working out, you know what I mean? And, um, or working on me, it, that's what I call, you know, working on me is I, I, my working out sessions in the morning and, um, whatever that may be, you know, on the elliptical or, or, or in the gym, hitting weights, whatever. And, um, so I produced that content of, from a spot to where, um, vulnerability for almost because you know this is this is what i'm feeling this is me right now and i'm putting it out there and um i feel like somebody might need to hear it so i put it out there and uh <clears throat> where i'm going with that is is you know um there's people out there that that um i'll talk to on the phone or i'll see them out and about and they're like hey man i read your post every morning you know, and I, I appreciate that. Keep doing that. That's good stuff. And uh, it's very inspiring. And I appreciate you putting it out there. And I'm like, man. So going back to what you were talking about, you know, you're making this impact on people. You don't know that. There's just people that follow us on Facebook, man, and uh, using it as a tool to to get to get something out there for people to hear. And, uh, you know, hopefully give them some inspiration to do better. And uh, typically it's something that has to do with working out or, or something like that. But, um, you know, I, I think it's weird. I got, I got invited to a bunch of um, fitness groups, you know, and, and uh, fitness owner groups and stuff like that. I own a gym, but I'm the only one that has a membership to it, you know, <laughs> me and my wife. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it. it's, uh, it's funny. And they were like, it is in a couple of those groups, you know, and um, they were like, what, how do you sell your product or whatever? And I was like, eh, I just like moving my stuff from place to place, you know, and uh, a buddy of mine, uh, Mark, he's got, um, you know, uh, make America fit again, Facebook page. And it's, you know, he's really good. And, um, but yeah, it's, it's funny because, it's almost it's almost uh, confusing to some people because hey, we also do roofs, right? Yeah, that, and it's you know, not just about it's not just about the roofing company, man. If I can inspire you in any part of your life, that's what I aim to do. Exactly, and I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, maybe about three weeks or so ago, I'm always on the Facebook, and there's these shows birthdays, right? And there's a young lady that I worked with, probably. I don't know, four or five years ago. And we were only coworkers for maybe a month at best. Right. Right. And I, I became friends with her and, you know, just, she was a nice girl moved to Oregon, I guess, or Washington, whatever. And it showed that it was her birthday. So I just put on there, you know, happy birthday. You know, we worked for a minute together, but you've always been a supporter. And I appreciate that. Well, she sent me a message back and it was like, I mean, it almost had me in tears. She said, uh, you know, Chuck, you're one of the most positive people that I've ever known. I feel so great that you were just brought into my life, even for just a brief moment. And then I'm able to follow and see. And what she told me after that was unbelievable. She said, uh, you posted on Facebook a while back about how these kids with the lemonade stand had more drive than most adults that, you know, and she said that hit me hard. 
And she opened her own business based off of that. And she said, you inspired me to start my own company. I wanted to do it. I wanted to do it, but I kept finding reasons why I couldn't and why I didn't want to and why it was the wrong time. And she said, just one day, your post inspired me to start my own company. And it's like, dude, that's the greatest honor that I ever have bestowed upon me or the greatest compliment because I didn't even know. I had no idea. And she said, you know, at a dark time in my life, you were nice to me. And I don't remember that, but uh, she remembers it. And to me, that is like the greatest surprise that you could ever get from somebody. And I mean, that's that's the whole point of why we do what we do. You know, there are people I, I you know, Matt Collins over in Arkansas with Collins and Son Roofing. Really like Matt a lot. Matt is on a mission right now where he's doing the uh, 75 hard. He's lost a bunch of weight, you know, really getting himself going the right direction. And he posted something yesterday and I just said, hey, Matt, you're doing a great job, man. I'm proud of you. And he said, you inspired me. And it's like, shoot, man, thank you. You know, I I don't think anything of myself, but if I inspired a couple people to do something or made them feel like they could do it, then you know, I don't need a paycheck. That's, that's the greatest paycheck there ever could be in life. That's right. That's right. And, you know, and there's a lot of people that chase a lot of money, man. And, 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 um, you know, it's when you get there and you're all by yourself and all you have is money, there's no feelings to money. Right. And, um, I honestly feel like that's why a lot of people, uh, when they when they get to a certain level, they start giving everything away. They start giving all their money away, doing the charities because they want some kind of fulfillment again. Money doesn't fulfill any holes, right? Except for a broke pocket. And um, I, I'm I, helping somebody in a way that you you can never, you know, if they're it. it if you're helping somebody that's not putting money in your pocket, right? That's not, it's not putting money into your pocket and you're helping them. That is the best feeling in the world. Whenever they, they take that and they run with it. Right. And, um, for instance, you know, I'm, uh, um, there was a, there was a few years ago and, um, I wanted to, uh, you know, I was at a point where it was either I was fixing to shut the doors Um, or I was fixing to go all in and, uh, again, and, um, I jumped on a plane, I flew out and, and, uh, sat down with, uh, Clint and Jojo and, um, on, uh, I picked up a book. I've been told to read this book multiple times. And if you're listening to this podcast, read this book, read this book book it's called the power of consistency from weld and long this was a major turning point in my life when i read this book and i started reading that book and it would if you ever read something and you can't you just can't put it down that was absolutely yep that was this book and um I was taking notes the whole time and it was a complete mind shift change. Right. I had somebody ask me, man, what, what, in what position do you feel like you're most powerful? And it was an interesting question. And it's when I have the least amount of control. It's when I'm on an airplane and I'm flying somewhere and I have the, I don't, you have zero control, right? You None. can't control anything except for the fact when you get up, when they let you get up, you know, you can, you can wave your hand and, you know, get you a, a water or whatever. But that's when I feel most powerful because I have most control over myself because I, I'm 100% in control of every thought that runs through my mind at that moment. And, um, honestly, you're the most vulnerable at that point, right? Because you, you don't have the physical control, but you have the mental control to, to allow what you think, uh, go on. And, um, so it was, 
it was an interesting question when they asked me that. And I really thought hard about it before I answered because, you know, most people, I don't angle say most people, some people would say, you know, they feel most powerful whenever they are, you know, in control of everything around them. And they have, you know, the, the bank account to that with multiple, multiple, um, commas and stuff in it, you know, but none of that matters at that point. And it's all about the thoughts that go through your head. And, um, so when I flew over there, um, and sat down with them, it was, it was, a a, a huge mind shift change for me because, um, I saw something that I inspired to have. And you were talking about deserving earlier, you know, whether you deserve it or not. Let me tell you something, man. Everybody out there deserves greatness. Everybody deserves the absolute best for themselves and their lives, right? <clears throat> we're not entitled to it by no means, but we deserve exactly what we put our mind to and and go after we deserve that as people as humans and that's what we need to continue to go after right and so i was like man i'm i'm worthy of this right here i deserve this and i'm gonna do this i'm gonna put this together and i came back and um i hit the ground running and um you know i i i'm not shy one bit to say that um you know uh Clint and, Le and Leanne, and, and uh, well, matter of fact, I think you were there. I if probably I was. I think that's when you came down from Indianapolis, and um, um, I think a lot of things changed. A lot of things changed for both of us at that point, and um, so you know, surrounding yourself with winners and people that are that are that are places where you want to go is super, super important, man. Super, super important, you know? And, um, I, it's, you got, you have to surround yourself with those kind of people. Yeah. I mean, that was the defining point of my life. Honestly, I'll never forget that day. I was working in Indy and, uh, I got the, I was talking to Clint actually. And Clint said, uh, you know, Kevin will be down here tomorrow. I'm like, Oh, Kevin, who? Kevin Burrell. I said, well, guess who else is going to be there tomorrow? Because at that point I realized I need to get in that room. You know, Mike Cote gave me the greatest compliment ever earlier this year when I was at your office speaking with your team, when Mike basically just said, you know what? Chuck always finds a way to get into the room. And it's like, I didn't understand the, the, the greatness of that compliment until maybe two or three days later when I was just sitting there thinking, it was like, you know, every opportunity that I've gotten has kind of been me kind of finding a way in and, and getting into it. But <clears throat> every single one of them that I've been awarded have also been deserved in my opinion. And I feel like, you know, it, it's been life changing being around the guys that I have. And I, I tell the story a lot when Rio Blanco was presented to me back in March of 2019, two and a half years ago, there were two people that I ate dinner with that night and it was Clint Koppel and Kevin Burrell. And I got my advice from you, you know, after that dinner, we sat down and we talked for another couple of hours. And I mean, you had nothing to gain or lose other than the fact that you were just helping someone out and you knew that I trusted your, your input. And then anything that you were going to tell me was going to get taken into account. And I mean, Kevin Burrell is one of the main reasons why I'm sitting at Rio Blanco right now, too, because I had a little bit of hesitancy and I thought, you know, man, can I do this? Is this is this really me or am I going to look like an idiot here? Am I going to make everybody who believes in me think that they're stupid for believing in me? But it, it was there was a whole lot of stuff that went on. I'm not going to explain everything. You were there, but you having the confidence in me at that point before even the partners that I was about to take with me to that is what sparked me to do it, you know, and that hundred dollar bill that I lost in the parking lot. I mean, that was, <laughs> that was a huge deal for me because it was like, man, somebody believes in me a hundred percent, dude, this dude threw a hundred dollar bill on the table, knowing that I was going to say yes, when I didn't even know I was going to say yes. So, 
that meant the world to me. I appreciate that. And, you know, like you said, just being around the right people. My whole world has changed in the last two and a half years because of the people I'm around. I uh, Last week, I got a chance to go visit um, Sean Dynamire's company over in Van Wert, Ohio. And Sean's a guy that I didn't know very well um, until this year. And again, I, I really met him when we went to your your roofing company in Atlanta earlier this year as a team. And we got to kind of talk and, and you start to realize, man, there are some really excellent people that are in this deal who genuinely just want you to win and genuinely don't have an ulterior motive. It's not about money. I mean, I've never given you a penny that I can think of, you know, for any, anything that you've ever done for me, it's always just been because that's the kind of guy you are. And that's, I try to do that same thing for as many people as I can. I love when younger people call me and ask me questions. Heck, I love when older people do. I mean, I get roofing company owners that call and reach out to me and just want to ask, you know, how did this work or how do you guys do this? And to me, that's now my role. I'm in the role now where I can be the guy who can help inspire somebody. I can help somebody do something that they had no idea they needed to do or they wanted to do or that they even could do. And that's the greatest responsibility of this whole thing. And when we get moving forward with our next steps, it's just going to magnify so much. I mean, I remember when Clint was telling me that, you know, his big goal was he wanted to help a million people. And I thought, well, you know, that sounds great, but a million people. And then you start looking around and you realize it's very doable. We've probably helped a million people already at this point in our life. You know, indirectly, someone's kid is eating tonight because of the the paycheck you gave the roofing crew that they work on. Or, you know, any number of people that you just meet throughout the, the day. You know, random people saying you inspired me to start my own company is crazy but it's a real thing and it happens and it's because of the shift in mindset. I never had that before when I was focused on myself and, you know, extremely competitive. And I would, you know, basically, you know, take someone out at the knees just so I could beat them to the finish line. And I realized I was miserable when it stopped becoming about me. And I started giving and giving and giving is when I started really feeling happy. So it's it's been amazing and the friends that i've been able to meet throughout the years in this deal and just the people that i get to converse with on a daily basis just if i couldn't be a better person because of that then shoot man something's wrong you know absolutely man you know so going back to that trip over there right like i was i was um it was somewhat intimidating right because i had to feel like man I felt like, w what can I a value bring to the table, right? And um, flying over here, I mean, th they're in a position to where I'm trying to go. Like, how, how, what kind of value can I bring? And um, so I was... I was really focused on that because I don't... You, you never, ever, ever want to go into another room or um sit at the table with no value you know you got to bring something you got to bring something and um if you don't you suck it dry you know you 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 gobble up the steak at the table and uh you don't bring nothing probably not going to get invited back and um so i felt like i really i had to bring something to the table and we sat down in that room and i i feel like you know i may have I may have brought some value and here's the, here's the thing is, is them inviting me over there. Um, they didn't have, there was nothing to gain from that. They it's just genuinely good people just doing good right. things for others. And, that's, and right. that's changed my entire mindset because I realize there are people that are genuine, you know, Clint, Leanne, Jojo, yourself, I've got friends that I know I can trust because they've proven it. You know, it's not about just screwing over the next guy so you can get yourself ahead a little bit. Those guys always get figured out, you know, and, and the people with the bad intentions or the people that are fake always end up losing. Um, and that's, that's been the biggest lesson for me. You know, if you think it was intimidating for you, boy, I'll tell you what, 
I'm walking in there and I've got Kevin and I got Clint, Jojo, Leanne. I think and maybe Mike. Mike. Mike was in there. <clears throat> and here comes little old Chuck, man. I've been a sales rep and I don't have a clue what's going on. I don't know anything about anything. And I'm supposed to go in here and like provide some kind of value too. And I think the greatest value I provided that day was when Clint told me, you know what? You just, you're doing a great thing. You're just sitting back and soaking it in and learning. And I said, dude, if I can't contribute positively, then I got to at least get something out of this, you know, and I have to learn as much as I can. So the next time I'm in the room, I feel like I have something that I can bring to the table. And every single time it's gotten a little bit easier. I mean, it's still one of the hardest things ever to go back there and, you know, understand that everybody in that room is more successful than I am right at this point. And I'm like the apple in the orange tree here, but I was never treated that way. I mean, I've always been treated like, dude, you're one of us. You're part of the group. You're just, as, you're on par with all of us. And I think a lot of that is, is really what helped us get this far so far is just having that confidence boost and knowing that the people that you believe in, believe in you and seeing them on a regular basis, just genuinely deliver, you know, anybody can talk about how, how they want to give back and what they want to do. And I know a lot of people that talk a lot about it, but they don't even really deliver. Um, these guys don't really talk about it. It just happens, you know, and, and I don't know. They, they let you make the mistakes. They gave me Rio Blanco roofing and said, you run it, dude. If anything major happens, let us know. But otherwise we're just going to assume that you're doing well. <laughs> and I mean, they've given me the freedom to basically be the face of a company that they bought and paid for. I mean, I don't make any any qualms about the fact that I got into this deal because I was willing to work, you know, monetarily. I didn't bring anything to the table. It, it's, you know, I'll, I'll work on the, the elbow grease and I'll put the hard labor into it. Um, but who does that? Who takes a complete stranger? I mean, at that point. I met Clint and Jojo in person probably less than three or four times ever. And they're talking about buying a roofing company and putting you in position to be set, you know? And it's like, dude, I don't know what I did to deserve it, but thank God I did, you know, cause changed my life. I can't imagine what life would be without the group that I'm with right now. And I'm thankful that I made it as long as I did before I met them without losing my mind. But, just genuine people, man. And they just truly care about everybody. And, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. I got two kidneys and two lungs and it's like, <laughs> hopefully more than two people don't need a lung or a kidney. Cause that's all I can give. But, you know, I, I'd be willing to do that at this point because they've given me everything that I've got in life. And, you know, you were a huge part of that. So I appreciate that very much. It, it, yeah, absolutely, man. I was, I, you know, I'm glad to see you doing so well with it. And um, so, you know, the next the next road that we travel, that's just a small part. Right. That's just a small part of what we're what we're going to be doing. And um, that's the kind of love and appreciation that you get out of um, what we're going to be doing, man. And I mean, it's it's going to be. <clears throat> It's going to be really good. And the, the, you just sat here and heard, if you're listening to this podcast, you just sat here and heard and listened to um, the success stories out of the helping part. And not one single person in that room was, it, it, it wasn't there to benefit. We weren't there to, uh, what can we get out of this? It was all, what can we bring to the table? And, um, you know, I don't know if I brought anything to the table or not, but I've been invited back. Right. So um, they see the value there somewhere. And uh, Chuck, you do get in the room everywhere you go. Chuck gets in the room. That's the key. I just got done doing a podcast with Joseph Hughes. And it was funny because the way that I got on that show was just completely me kicking the door open. Uh, he had a, he had another dude on the show last week, and and the question was, what should we ask this guy who's going to be on there? And I'm like, why don't you ask him when you're going to have Chuck Allen on your show? Because that dude's fire. And uh, I mean, that's 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 all I did. I just wrote on there, hey dude, let me do it. And there was another guy that uh, just kind of gave the the laugh emoji or whatever, and I said, dude, watch, 
watch and see if this works because I know it does. If you don't ask, the answer is always no. But if you ask, most of the time, the answer is yes. And, uh, you know, this dude reached out to me the next day and said, bro, let's do it. Let's get this going. You know, I'm, I'm interested and I see what you're doing. Um, but if I would have just sat by idly and just assumed, hey, man, this guy doesn't need to talk to me. He's already got his deal. Yeah, I mean, I would have probably never gotten that opportunity. So but look, it's all here's about the thing. opportunity. Had you asked and not been putting in the work, I don't think I, I, I don't, you know, you probably wouldn't have gotten invited. Right. Like, Absolutely. And, and we talked about that. It was like I, I, Joe, he was counting the number of times I used the word lucky. You know, I'm lucky to be here. I'm lucky to be around all these people. I'm lucky, lucky, lucky. And he's like, dude, luck is just basically, you know, putting in the work. And you create your own luck in life. And I, I think about that from time to time, but I don't really put that in perspective. But spot on, man. I mean, I'm I'm always trying to get out there and always trying to expand and meet new people. And, you know, people see it and they appreciate it and they want to be a part of it, too. So it's it's a huge thing. And I, I can't say enough how just take an action, man. That's all you got to do. If you take action, you're going to be ahead of 99% of the people on this planet who don't, who are waiting for the opportunity to be right. Or, you know, if I do this, then I'll be ready. Or if this happens, I'll be ready. You've always got a reason not to be ready. And, you know, it was like with Rio Blanco, they asked me, are you ready? Do you know what you're going to do? And I'm like, dude, I don't know. I don't know. Let's go do it, though. Let's see what happens, you know. And I came down to San Antonio, and I'll be honest, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. But I better <laughs> figure something out because a lot of trusted people put their faith in me. And if I look stupid, I look stupid regularly, so it doesn't bother me. But I don't want to make the people that put their trust and the belief in me to look stupid. And that was my motivation, you know. Like, I have a lot of people that think that I'm the right guy for this opportunity, even if I don't see it myself, I'm doing everybody a disservice if I don't give this everything I have and try my hardest to be the most successful I can be. And, you know, that that's that's what I wake up every morning and do because I want to make the people proud that believed in me. And I want the people that I believe in to to want me to be proud. And it's just it's a constant cycle that we're living on a daily basis. But, man. How much fun is it? I mean, we get to do this stuff. We're we're having fun. We get to travel. We get to meet cool people. We get to do great things. And honestly, I don't remember how it all started, but it, it like Mike and, and you said, I mean, it's just finding your way into the room. And once you get in the room, if you got to serve water to begin, that's great. You know, start listening, start taking notes, start talking like the people in the room. And eventually you become one of the people in the room. And that's been probably the greatest thing for me over the last two years is seeing my growth personally from, I mean, dude, I never would have even thought that I could have even gone in that room. I was intimidated, you know, of everybody in there, but it was like, dude, if you don't, someone else will. And then you're going to step back and you're going to say, man, that could have been me. That should have been me. I would have been better, you know, I'm probably not the best option. I'm sure there's somebody out there more qualified, but they didn't take the uh, take the opportunity when it was presented to them. They didn't create that opportunity, and that to me is it's where it is. Create your opportunity and act on it. They didn't take no action, man. Action's the most important thing. Um, you figure out the details on the way through. You know what I mean? Just get the ball rolling. Just get the ball rolling. Yeah. Guaranteed jump off, jump off the cliff and see if there's water halfway down, you know? Guaranteed you're not going to hit the ball if you don't ever swing the bat. Nope. And that's been the secret to my life is I've just been willing to do stuff, you know? I don't have any yeah. special skills, that's for sure. <laughs> Man, it's just putting in the work. Just putting in the work. That's all. I, <clears throat> I, I, I've, I've talked about this before is, is um, when I played football, I was the shortest – fattest kid on the field. But I was also one of the fastest on the field. But because of my size, I had to work twice as hard, you know, and um, 
I might not have been the best on the field, but n- n- I was not going to get outworked. I was going to put in the work yeah. and I was going to hustle, you know, and that I've kept that same mentality up to where I am right now is I'm going to continue to put in the work. It's going to be hard to outwork me. And, um, don't get me wrong, man. We all have our off days, right? And uh, but I'm gonna put in the work, you know. And um, I'm gonna let the results speak for the work that we put in. And um, it it it'll be there, you know. There's no denying. There's no denying it. Once once the results show up, is dang, did he put in the work? Yeah, he put in the work. That's how he got the results. And I tell you right now, I did not have anything figured out when I started. I just knew what not to do. And that was a very small amount of what not to do that did I know. Um, Because, you know, the the little bit that I did before, um, before I opened up Burrell Roofing, um, it wasn't much, but by God, every time somebody was talking something about, you know, something about something that I didn't know, I was there and I was listening to it and I wanted to know what they, I I, I wanted to learn asking questions constantly, probably got on people's nerves. I asked so many questions, but, um, you know, and and, and so that's one thing about this industry is, is the misconception of, man, I got to know product. I got to know product. I'm fixing to give you all the product knowledge you need right here when it comes to shingles, right? Is they're all granular, granular based. They all have asphalt in them. They all have uh, fiberglass matting in them and they're all ran through a press and put together. And some of them come out different colors than the others. And um, you just got to get behind one that you believe in and, uh, a product that you like, the colors that you like, and um, put them out there, man. Because you know, watch a couple roofs go on, and um, um, you'll see how it goes down. It, it, it seems intimidating, um, but it's not really. It's not. Once you get past the first one, you realize the second one's got the same exact components. You know, (laughs) what, 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 what do you get? You get the same seven or eight things on every roof, you know, after a while it's like, Oh, okay. But you're so right about product knowledge. And that's, that's a great uh, segue into the next part. Um, I was over in Van Wert with Sean's group. And also I did a training yesterday with my guys over in the Tyler office And both cases, when I asked them, you know, what what aspect of this job do you think you need the most improvement on? They both said product knowledge. And I said, okay, well, ask, you know, answer this. What about product knowledge do you feel like you need to know more of? Well, you know, we need to know how many nails there are and we need to know how many this and we need to know how many pieces of that. And I said, now. That sounds great, but in 20 years, I've never had a homeowner ask me how many pieces of drip edge I got to put on their house. It doesn't happen. I've never had a homeowner ask me how many nails we're putting in the shingle. It's never happened. You know, what homeowners care about and what people in general care about is they want to feel good. They buy with the emotion. Nobody nobody cares about shingles, you know. That's just the sad truth. There's a few, you know, you're going to get a handful of engineers, but the, the, the fact of the matter is your standard homeowner that just got their house hit with hail, they've got two things on their mind. Number one, they don't want their roof to leak. And number two, they want their house to look good again. And that's really it. You know, I tell people a lot of the times now when I sell a roof to a homeowner, I don't really sell a roof. I help them with their process. Um, you could go back 10 minutes after I leave and ask them what kind of shingle we're putting on. And they just say, I, I don't know, you know, the kind that Chuck said that 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 one color that's like weathered wood or whatever you know and they don't even care and it it took me a long time into my career to understand that because i came from distribution where you know i had to deal with contractors and contractors would call me needing product knowledge so i just assumed that homeowners cared about product knowledge too and 
you know, that's where I really got myself in trouble initially is, is just, you have to realize what people care about. They want to feel good. They want to feel smart. They want to feel like they made a good choice. And then you can justify it with the facts afterwards, you know, Oh, by the way, this is the number one rated roof system. Here's a little video to kind of illustrate that. But when I stopped talking about products and just started dealing with feelings and just being me and, you know, design more around relationships than sales. And I tell all my clients, I want to be your roofer for life. I don't want to do just this one roof. I want you to tell your friends. I want, you know, heaven forbid you have an issue five years from now. I want to be the guy you call because you know that you're in good hands. You know, I'm going to take care of it. You know, it's going to be right. And if it's not, you know that I'm not going to quit until it is because that's just who I am. And, you know, that's how you sell the deals nowadays. You know, the guys that are worried about we are going to install the, you know, blank, blank, blank shingle and it has the blank, blank, blank wind and, and whatever warranty. I mean, whatever. I did that for years and I realized, you know, what a waste. Probably took two or three weeks off of my life and wasted breath just talking about shingles that nobody cared about. Right. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like they, they, they care about the shingle, right? Because that's what protects their house. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what protects the inside of their house from the elements, right? They, they, they care about that. Um, but just knowing that, that here, here's this shingle, right? You can, you can go on any YouTube channel, I'm sure, and learn about shingles, you know? And, um, but, being able to um, being able to just go in there and talk to them and build a relationship outside of the product. And, um, you know, it's the particular shingle we sell. It's one of the oldest in the industry, right? Like, and that's just what we, you know, they haven't been through a class on shingles. Just, Hey man, this is, you know, trust us. This is, what we feel like is the best shingle on the market. And um, this is why we feel that way and take it and, and, and put it out there, you know, for the homeowners or whatever. But um, you don't have to know that that's, that's a misconception about this is you don't have to know everything about the product itself. Um, now the components, that's, that's pretty important. The it's definitely good to know that. Definitely. The components are important. Yeah. Because if they ask you how you're going to put this roof on, you need to know. Right. But they're not going to ask you what kind of fiberglass matting or who that manufacturer bought their granules from or who, what manufacturer or, or, or where they're getting their, their, their granules colored from. Right. That's just not, they don't care about that. Um, only weirdos like me care about that. And me. <laughs> I love that stuff. <laughs> I'm into it too, man. I'm like, where did these granules come from? Where, where are you mining them at? Right? Like I'm weird like that, but, um, you know, <clears throat> if they just focus on building that relationship and talking to the homeowner and, uh, being the person that they can trust, and uh, if something were to ever happen or the person they can trust to hand over a check to, right? Like um, build that value and they're, they're not going to have a problem, man. It's, it's going to, it's really easy. Um, it's one of the hardest, but most rewarding, easiest jobs you've ever been in. It truly is. And, you know, once, once you figure that out, Everything becomes clear, you know, and yesterday was great because I'm in Tyler and it's a new office. We've got some young kids and we've got, you know, some established adults. Um, none of them have any experience with what we do. So <clears throat> when you talk to them, they give you these these reasons, you know, like this is where I'm struggling because of this. I don't think I'm making deals and you explain it to them in a way that they can kind of put it together. And I think it was you that said this to me yesterday, maybe that, you know, I'm not going to give you the answers, but I'm going to, I'm going to give you some questions and you're going to lead yourself down the path to the answer. And when you can see someone's light switch flip on because they just, they just got it. 
And then you see them go out and just have massive success. It's like, wow, that was so powerful because, you know, it was just something small, but I was able to help this person get over the hump. I was able to help them get going. And now they're, you know, they're believing in themselves. They're out there really killing it. And it was all just based off some advice from me. And I, I think that's, that's a wonderful feeling. You're right. It, it makes you feel like, your purpose in life is greater than just, you know, managing a roofing company. And when, when you do that, right. And you're talking to them and you're asking questions and, and <laughs> it's, you'll hear them in the middle of answering your question. It goes silent. And they're like, I just answered my own question. There it was. There it is. You knew the answer. Um, and, and look, hey, I've been I've I've been done like that, you know, a bunch. I'm like, hey, what do you think about this? Well, what would you do? And you start explaining it, and you're like, ah, oh. so I did the right thing. Yeah, yeah, you're you're on the right path. That's right. So, and this is what this boils down to, right? I think personally is is the confidence in what you think. You know, having that confidence in, in what you're thinking is proper or not. It doesn't matter. Just take action on it and it'll allow for that shift during the transition. If it's not right, you can adjust um, if you see, you're going to feel it, you're going to see it, you're going to know it. Is this going the right direction or not? If not, make an adjustment. The most important thing is, is you just you just made it through something um, that produced results and you did it on your own. It's a confidence builder. You you got to take the action and, and make it work because I'm going to be honest with you, man, what a lot of entrepreneurs, what a lot of sales guys, what a lot of business owners – uh, all, there's a confidence thing. There's there's an issue with that. Like you can be, you can have confidence, but there's a lack of confidence in decisions that you make because you're looking for the um, the rec not not recognition. You're looking for the the um, the sign or whatever you know that this is the right decision that I'm making. And sometimes you just got to sit back and wonder, is it, it, it and think about it, is this decision, where's my vision? And this is, is this decision lining up with that? And uh, is it going to move me any closer to that vision? And look, if it, if it's one step closer to that vision, then make the decision and go. Yep. It's worth it at that point, you know, but, but you're so right because you see a lot of people that, that look at that and then they're hesitant because they just don't have that total confidence. And I mean, sometimes you just have to have blind confidence in yourself and you have to know, Hey, look, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to be the best option. I'm going to do the best job. And even if you don't know that to be a fact, just portraying it and saying it is, you know, that's half the battle. You wake up in the morning, you know, I don't want to get up and go do a three mile run. But I wake up and I'm like, okay, if I don't do my three mile run, I see Kevin's going to post something about doing his and I'm going to feel like crap. So I make the decision to get up and do it, you know? Right. And it's that, that is, that's, that's really an amazing thing because not everybody can do that. And it's crazy. I tell my guys, you know, if you show up at a job on time, if you brush your teeth, if you don't smell like alcohol, you don't smell like cigarettes, you're better than 75% of the people that you're in the market with. You know, I don't use the word competition because I don't believe in it, but it's like the other people are not on our level, you know, and you can go and easily become a superstar if you just follow these three or four steps. And then you see someone do that and become successful. And it's like, hey, see, Apparently, I knew what I was talking about, or at least my message in this case got through to someone to the point where it worked, <clears throat> and that's that's awesome, you know. You know Chuck Taylor? Um, I don't know him personally. I'll tell you a story about Chuck Taylor real quick. He was in the ASAP office in Indianapolis with John Dye and myself, and on my last day in Indianapolis, 
we fired Chuck Taylor from ASAP. It was a, a weird thing, but, you know, I think in hindsight, even Chuck says, yeah, I, I understand now why it happened. Um, wasn't anything malicious. It was just a bad situation. <clears throat> but Chuck Taylor, prior to that, was selling roofs at ASAP. And I was trying to help him out, you know, get him over the hump, get him going. And the one thing I remember telling him was, Chuck, dude, uh, you get judged by everybody, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, you get judged. You get judged by the way you look. You get judged by the way you speak. You get judged by everything that you do. And I said, the truth of the matter is, the way that you portray yourself to a homeowner is, is the ultimate factor in your success. And what Chuck was always saying to me was, he wanted to go in and he wanted the people to know that he was a roofer. And by, you know, I'm a roofer, that means... I'm wearing dirty jeans. I smell like cigarettes. I've got grease under my fingernails. You know, I'm the roofer. And I said, Chuck, the truth of the matter is you're not the roofer, dude. The roofer is the people that we're going to put on the roof. Um, the least or the, the last thing I want is for them to think I'm a roofer. I want them to know I'm a professional. I understand how this is going to work. My job is to help you pick the right system to show you the process to understand what your needs and wants are and cater this to you. But I'm going to pass it off to some guys with hammers and nails, you know, and Chuck Taylor, he argued with me on it for a little bit. Right. And, and I just told him, Hey bro, my numbers will back me up. You know, I don't have to tell you anymore. My numbers back me up. We went to the 10 X growth conference in Miami. And when I came back the very first day, Chuck Taylor was wearing dress pants, dress shoes, button up shirt, you know, a nice leather jacket just looked like a completely different guy. And he said, you know, what you told me really resonated and it made me realize I've been going about this wrong. People are looking at me like I'm that handyman guy who just does a little bit of everything. You're telling me that I'm an expert. I'm a professional. I'm the guy. I'm the authority. Well, Chuck Taylor took that that boost in his motivation and his thoughts and he has a roofing company that he went and started and he's doing amazing. You know, the guy's out there killing it, showing himself to be a high level professional. He built an amazing company, but I think it all started off of that conversation where it was like, dude, you have to change your mindset. You can't think like you're the laborer because that's not what the homeowners are wanting. <clears throat> they, they appreciate the fact that you can do that, but they really don't care. I've never had a single homeowner in my 20 year career ask me, are you going to be the guy installing the roof? You know, so shifting that thought process is what changes your entire world. And it's just little things, you know, it's, it's little things. It's just saying, I'm not a roofer. I'm a professional, but I hire the best roofers, you know? And once, once you realize that and you can start putting those things together, your whole world becomes much better. And that's, that's been the story of life for me. Yeah, we we have some of the best crews around we have for a long time and um you know it's it's the experience that's what they want they want to get taken care of I heard somebody say it the other day man and this right here makes so much sense everybody hates getting sold but everybody loves to buy Yep That's yeah. That's true we all like buying stuff yeah, you just think about it, and that's that's the, the absolute truth. The example I always tell people was one that I got from Mike, and it was basically, you know, when I've got sales reps and they're having a little bit of a struggle getting going, the first thing I ask them is this. Um, let's just put this in your head. You drove to the shopping mall, dude. You're walking around Macy's. You know what you need. You're, you're there to get a pair of pants. Someone from the mall walks up and says, hey, can I help you? What's the first thing you say? I'm good. Yeah, I'm just looking. Now, you know that that person can take you exactly where you need to go, but you don't want to do it because, number one, you feel a little bit of vulnerability. You feel like you're not in control of that situation. And, you know, it's a pair of pants. Why would I not need you to or why would I not want you to just show me where they're at? Because subconsciously now I feel like 
I'm in a weaker state and you're going to try to sell me a belt while I'm here. You're going to try to sell me a <laughs> pair of socks, you know? Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's really not that, but it, it, it's on a higher level and a different scale with our homeowners, you know? Have you ever been through the insurance? Oh, yeah, I've been through it before. I know how this all works. Okay, well, you know, you understand that this is going to happen. And then this, well, what? What are you talking about? Okay, you haven't really been through it, but you didn't want me to think that you hadn't been through it until you just basically showed me that you hadn't been through it. And human nature is to never want to be a victim. It's never wanting to be weak. It's always wanting to be in control. And, you know, once you figure out how to overcome that and get those walls to come down, build the comfort with people, you know, then you can start to, to work with them. But, you know, it, it, it's you're, you're so right. Nobody wants to be sold. You know, that's the dirtiest profession in the world, according to a lot of people. It's also the oldest, you know. But it's look, nothing happens till something gets sold, right? That's just the way it is. That's the way the world bounces, whether they like it or not. And I mean, where everything is a negotiation, everything's a sale. You know, where are you going to dinner tonight? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. You, you negotiate, and, and someone's going to decide where to go to dinner. Then you're going to come to an agreement. And you're going to go to dinner. You know, yep, every 100%. little detail, every aspect in life is a sale. You know. Your kids are wanting you to to do something for them. Okay, well, you know, hey, Dad, if I go mow the grass, you know, will you give me 20 bucks so I can go do something, right? All the time. All yeah. the time, man. Good, because that means that your, your children are going to be smart and they're going to be leaders, you know? But that's that's human nature. You figure yep. it out and then you, you, you know, figure out how to make it work. So pretty good that's, stuff. Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, so we've been on for, uh, almost two hours now. And, um, I, I, you know, at this point right here, I think we got some good content to put out. I do too. And I think we leave the door open for at least another two hour episode, not too far down the road. And who knows, maybe the Chuck and Kevin show can become a regular thing at some point. Yeah. The C and K show. How there about you that? go. <laughs> I'm all for it. So, yeah, um, I'm going to put this together in the studio. I'm going to edit it down a little bit. That little three minute bathroom break has <laughs> no, it, it'll be like it never happened. Um, the conversation we had about some other stuff never happened. So, life will be good. We're going to drop some heat. I'm going to try to get this out probably next week. Uh, worst thing that could have happened to me is I left my iPad at the office in Tyler yesterday. So, I'm not going to go back there until next weekend i'll see you actually in tyler next weekend and uh you know have all that stuff together but i'll probably edit it on my phone because this is fire i can't wait a week to release it i've already got the episode number i've got episode seven of keeping it rio tonight and this is going to be episode eight so it I'm, should be uh, a winner i'm trying to come up with a name for mine now so i still i, I still haven't We'll, so put a, we'll, we'll put a contest out or something. I'll mention it today on Keeping It Real. I'll say my buddy Kevin wants to name his podcast. Best name gets a $25 gift card for Amazon. There you go. We'll there get some go. creative stuff. I have some creative friends. Yeah. I, I'm Look, man, I, we, we, it's going around the office right now. And um, we can't come up with anything right yet, man. Something that's got to be catchy. You know, I was... It's going to go with Burrell built, right? And then everybody's like, eh, the name, man. You know, your name gets slaughtered all the time. It's Barrel, Barley, Borelli. And I was like, Borelli built don't sound very good. So barrel we're not going to do it. <clears throat> yeah. So Barrel built, what is that? Um, so we'll come up uh, with something catchy. I came up with keeping it real like two minutes after I walked in the door <clears throat> the first time. I was like, you know what? One day I'm going to have a podcast. And I'm going to call it Keeping It Rio. And here we are, two and a half years later, episode eight. Episode eight. That's it. All right. Well, good deal, Chuck. But if you need anything, you holler at me. Yeah, 10 4. Kevin Burrell, thank you for being a guest on Keeping It Rio today. I look forward to many more things in the future that we've got coming up. And uh, we're going to announce some things here in the not too distant future, probably on a, a platform like this. So. Looking forward to it. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate everything that you've ever done for me. And like you just said, if you ever need anything, you know who to call. Likewise, friend. All right, brother. We'll take it. Uh, 
we'll we'll just call it a day right here keeping it real thank you everybody for being a part of this episode and uh you know don't forget to like and subscribe and tell all your friends and all that stuff because i want to make money off this thing eventually <laughs> i'm way 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 in the hole with the equipment and everything so <laughs> i need to i need to make some money quick <laughs> so all right everybody take care thank you and uh we'll talk to y'all again real soon see you buddy <laughs>